everyone welcome to my channel and today we are now on the second episode of our youtube uh, series titled be inspired for this episode i am with my classmate and i consider her as my good friend a warm welcome to mrs j ann bolan grant <laughs> hello hi sir raymond kamusta Okay, man. Sige, how was your week naman so far? Good work after work and then side gigs. Mm -hmm. Yes, busy ang life as always. Uh oh Okay, I so, something about the place where you currently live right now? Oh, I live in Irvine, California. Something about the... One of the... Chief, uh, no, one of the chiefs <laughs> <laughs> uh, safest city in USA and mm -hmm. uh, I should say one of the ex most expensive cities <laughs> you know yes. no homeland no as in it's very nice place aside from you know you're always safe when you walk around in the middle of the night yeah you only just get scared from coyotes you know coyotes yes I think I've seen one <laughs> when I was in the US I totally yeah. agree uh, um, Irvine is such a beautiful place, Gid. very peaceful. And then there are a lot of places to see, especially the beaches, I guess. It's it's yeah. not that far from Los Angeles, from San Diego, and Mexico, right I middle. guess. Yeah, so you're in the middle, so you have a lot of places to see. So let's and talk about... Hmm? We're close from Filipino Seafood City, five minutes away. I guess that's the best part yeah. of it, di ba? Kasi malapit lang sa seafood city pa. It feels like home pa din somehow. Okay. <laughs> hmm. So can you tell us um, about where did you grow up at and how was your childhood like? Oh, God. Childhood, uh, pigado katama. Uh -huh. we, since we were young, we usually, you know, work in the farm, pangampo, hilamon, ano, that, uh, Ano pangga pang ano pala panggabot ni Lamon. Mhm. Mm Pamat dan sang una yes. kay no o as in. And now we grew up like that and because aga buli ko kay mama mong labas sa suba, sang labada sa piyak bala yang you know mga manggaano na kainod mo amo na ulan amo sa una. Do ka ano gyud. And then Sa muna, doon ka ano lang kayo ba yung mga technology, focus ang mga bata bala sa pagtuon, pag uli sa balay, mang limpyo, mang masigang. Tapos mm -hmm. pag, nung, uh, as in nga, doon do ka tao, hay ka pang buhay sa muna kayo, kayo sa tulad. Kasi to, para kung tanahay, mga bata, doon kalingaman na sa mga social media. Nakita ko man sa mga pakaisahan ko, doon ka rinaway, tungod sa mga social media, abaw, anakon, sobrahan yes. git. <laughs> Tapos when, yeah, we're a classmate in high school. Sa, sa, sa taga Pinulpan ako. Then, in high school, in Pasi High, we're classmates, you know naman, we're the, be, we're the most behaved students. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Sige, so you studied element, your elementary at? Ah, uh, hiinis ko na elementary school. Yes, and medyo malapit lang sa, di ba, sa balay ninyo. So you just have to, like, walk every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Walk every day. Pugis aga kabitas kay silas. Namang kayo may, may buho. Doon yun hama mo pa kabutang katamtak. Di ba mga experiences I, good ay at? I know. Mm -hmm. So after graduation mo sa um sa high school, din ikaw nag-eskwela, where did you pursue your college? I pursued my college in Isat. And, and um, I'm both from Isat na nag-iabot ko roon. Ang WBSU bala sa, sa Iloilo, sa, sa La Paz. Classmate ko na board mate ko si Cristel Franco. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. a good friend of mine. She always helped me kasi siyempre tama kapigado. And then we do have an allowance going, oh my God, please is stop. Going, sorry. Ginaano na ang hampangan na ginapalagpok na sa <laughs> No worries, good. Nag-harampang matana. And then, sometimes magagdo kami sa eskwilahan ka na uh, we don't have allowance, 100 pesos. Pritihan mo pa sa bus and then when you come back, you have, you know, you have to use that for your allowance and for food. And sometimes I cry going to, riding in the bus because it's not, that's not yes. enough. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then my, yeah, my dad is just, you know, farmer. And look at, 
it's very hard, but you know, you have you know to to struggle in in order to get to be where the place I am right now. Even here right now, I'm I'm you know I always make my time that I don't just sit up here at home and do just nothing. I always I'm always busy. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So what course did you took in college and were you able to finish it? Oh, I, I took education, but I didn't quite finish it because you know it's it's so hard and it's hard to to continue without the full support, like especially financial. So I I stop it and I will look for jobs. So first, I I work in La Paz. I work as a housemaid at first, and then you know I. I think I stop and go back to school again, and then I didn't finish again because financial is hardships. And then I went to and I applied as a sales lady in Gaisano. Yeah, that's my first job there. I think it's that's in Guangpo, right next to UI. Uh-huh. I'm not that familiar. Yeah. Oh, oh, I worked there, and then mm-hmm. you know, as I started, I know how to work in that kind of field. I I got used to like. Gaisano in Pasi. I worked there as a kashi, a filler, and you know the one in their putting stocks on the items. Mm-hmm. And then I came back. I became a sales lady, and then I work in a Broadway gyms in oh, just yeah. my mall area. Yeah, Gaisano. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I work in bread and butter as a cashier. Yeah, I get so much. Yeah, I, I work there as a cashier too. And then uh, when I was like turning 23, like, do you remember the, the typhoon Yolanda? Yes, yes, uh-huh. Yeah. So our house is, you know, vanished with all of that. The typhoon, our roof is hanging on the top of the trees. <laughs> so oh, like, wow. that's why I worked there. Yeah, I said, oh, I need to do more. So that's why I... I I work as uh, I apply as a domestic helper in Saudi Arabia. Mm. So how long did you work in Saudi Arabia as an OFW? Almost six years. Uh. In one employer, yeah. Mm. So yeah, I was so lucky because every time I, you know, God is good, I always like get a good employer, like you know, good employer, and like it's it's very rare to find that people like. Like if they're gonna bring you whenever they travel, and you know it's you know if you hear Middle East how people are mm. how domestic helpers were abused, but mm. I'm the luckiest one because you know I I enjoy my life there. I even though we can't you can't you can't go out free because in that time it's very strict. You can't just go out anytime you want, no day off. But I'm still thankful because you know I'm. I'm. I can tell. Like I, I get a lot of financial support with my boss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can go on vacation anytime I want. Nice. Mm-hmm. Travel in different countries. That's the most important. Enjoy life for free. Yeah. So, what are the countries that you've been to while working in Saudi Arabia? Oh, I've been to first. I went to Jordan because they're Jordanian. So. And every day travel every three months we went there. We went to uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, no, uh, Dubai. Mm-hmm. Dubai is nice. It's very clean, but it's expensive. So, and we went to Lebanon. Oh. Yeah, we we had a, a, a cruise in Greece. Wow, <laughs> nice. Yeah, and was uh, I forgot. It's been a while, but uh, sometimes like uh-huh. I'm not so black. <laughs> What else? Yes, um, because there are so many. Turkey, which is the reason. yeah, oh. I've been in Turkey a few times, so that's a very nice country too. It's a lot of nice resorts and hotels mm-hmm. over there. So yeah, I, I I could experience like that places that you know it's only in your dreams. Yes. <laughs> you can't even afford it. Just you know, True. How how hard it is. <laughs> So like right now you are in the US. So how did the opportunity of being able to go to the US came in? Oh yeah. Um, so when I was working, this is a nice part. Like it's, it, yes. <laughs> I was working in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I met my husband mm-hmm. uh, through Facebook. So yeah, I don't know where I joined like some dating sites. Like I, I never. And then one time like he messaged me. Mm-hmm. Um, like December 
15, I think, he messaged me and hi, hello, because you know he likes to, to he, he's he likes Asian people, he, especially Filipinos. His dream is to visit Philippines one day, and you know, and you see, like he has a lot of Filipino friends too. Like one of his closest, like he's always giving him advice how to go mm -hmm. there, how to find a right girl for him. Mm -hmm. So he messaged me. I didn't reply because I, I I was busy working there in Saudi uh -huh. Arabia, and, <laughs> and like I thought he's a scammer. You know, I got scared. Of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then one time, like he 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 talk a lot, so that's why like God, this man talks so mm -hmm. much. And then <laughs> like uh, after two months, I am my vacation in the Philippines when I came back there. So. I was bored in the airport and like, uh -huh. oh, there's nobody online. They were waiting for my flight going to Iloilos. I, I have no one, nobody to talk. So, mm -hmm. so I was scrolling my my Facebook was online. So like, I asked, I, I called him. So he's the one online, my friends list. So I called uh -huh. him. And that's why we started talking. Um, but he's not bad. He looks handsome. <laughs> then after uh -huh. after that, we started talking every day. So that's, that's how our friendship starts. And then after a year, he visited me again in the Philippines. We met and he met my family. And we went to Cebu. And then he came back to the U.S. I came back to Saudi Arabia. And mm -hmm. he filed my visa, like fiancé visa. And then mm -hmm. after that, um, I was approved. Uh, after four months, I was approved. And then, you know, I, I, I quit my job in Saudi Arabia and process my papers and luck and you know god is good i get my visa right away and then i came over here mm, yes so yes so can you tell us something about your better half can you tell us something about josh oh josh you know you met him he's a nice yes man. i did yeah he support me all the way i i could ever think a man like him he's the best yeah you know you've been friend with him you know yeah. he's very nice Okay. And, like, and he's chill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you never get mad, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he loves to enjoy life, like he, yeah, and he's he's very caring. He's very faithful, and he he can, you know what? That's the only thing I I, I like about him because he he doesn't know how to not to say a lie. Like he knows mm -hmm. he never do that. His his mm -hmm. his so I'm so lucky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, right now he's working, um, he's sleeping right now, but <laughs> yeah, he's, you know, he struggled a lot to like in life, then yes. that's how, yeah, the way he came to this point, like, he's, that's because he's very smart and got mm -hmm. hearing. Yeah, that's awesome. And then like when I was there, I've also listened to his stories about the struggles that he has to I go know. through just to bring yeah. you there in the U.S. and then also, you yeah. know, his friends telling him about this and that, you know, um, but she still, uh, I mean, he still tried his best to bring yeah. you there and now you're there. So, yeah, um, he, he, he saved a lot for, yes. um, to, yeah, he rode in a bike just to go mm -hmm. to work. He doesn't want to buy a car, but, you know, he has his goal in life that, oh, I need, I, I don't want to settle for less. I need to do mm -hmm. higher more than that. So, like, uh, he, he don't mind to struggle. Uh, until he he reached for whatever he wants, so that's why he's he's very nice man. Like I'm so I'm so lucky to have him. Yes, I, I totally I totally agree with that one because I was able to uh, meet him and I was able to meet you again there and we were able to go around Irvine and see many places yeah. together. Yeah. So That's how long? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how long have you been living in the U.S.? I've been here uh, for almost four years now, since uh, August 2019, yeah. Mm. Oh, so what, October, October 2019, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So what's the best part of, you know, being able to live in the U.S.? You know what, the best part being here is you can do whatever you want. You can, mm -hmm. for example, you can be a doctor, you can be a nanny at once, you can be a teacher. We can whatever you want like people don't judge you here right you can like you can be a madame and then next yes. you can <laughs> yeah you can just clean toilet there but next mm -hmm. day you can be a doctor it's it's no 
there here there no discrimination mm-hmm. yes so true so what made you decide study uh, like what made you decide to pursue studying again For what um, made you decide to pursue going to school again you know um i won't be able to do this without the support my husband's support so he's the one you know researching for me everything you know at first i i try i i he teach me how to drive he did everything yeah you know this is so hard you know here in us is so hard if you don't know how to drive you're gonna be like a disabled person mm-hmm. like just can get out the house because mm-hmm. you know here in california especially in irvine our transportation is so mm-hmm. hard people don't have buses we don't have public transport you have to own your own car in order to go like you know 20 minutes walk it's mm-hmm. so, it's very hard so you know without my husband's support mm-hmm. i can't do everything what i am right now because he's he's the one doing everything for me he's my secretary <laughs> <laughs> and your supporter yeah uh, yeah at first i came here yeah i'm just um i don't have at first you know you have to process all your papers so i work a lot of housekeeping jobs Mm. It's kind of hard and so much things like one time I work in this white family like it's a, a lady and um, I, she owe me like 1500 is $1,500 she never paid me until now so oh, like, that's sad. Yeah, I know here is sometimes some bad people like that mm-hmm. like her and I was so depressed the time I was always crying. I remember like, oh, oh my god, I worked so hard because she, she moved in an apartment and she let me like oh, fix all her stuff. And then wow. after, yeah, it's been, I was working and she, she I, I texted her and she never paid mm-hmm. me. So, you wow. know, my husband is always telling me like, there's always karma. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's true. Mm-hmm. But so that's... I work. I don't stop working. I, mm-hmm. I keep searching because you know, just here, there's a lot of online jobs that you can search, looking for employers. So after that, I get lucky and I find another housekeeping full time in Newport Coast. You know, Newport mm-hmm. Coast. That's where Kobe Bryant lives. All the uh-huh. Mike Tyson, all the switch celebrities there. Mm-hmm. So I work there for two years and same time go to school. Oh. So right now you are working as. Uh, I right now I'm a registered dental assistant. Yeah. I got my license. I got after school. I, I I got my license last April. Yeah, I got like one take and I passed it. So I'm wow. so happy. Yes. And because you did all the hard work. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm pursuing to uh, still. I'm still pursuing to to be a hygienist. Oh. You know here. Here That's another US, thing. Yeah, here in US, like here in, in Philippines, only dentists do everything, right? Dentists, oh, clean, yes. Yeah, dentists do the braces, dentists mm-hmm. everything. But mm-hmm. here in US, the dental assistant do the ortho. We're putting oh. braces. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, we're putting braces. We're doing uh temporary crowns. Like it's only dentists do is diagnose. They oh. only diagnose patients mostly, uh-huh. and they, yeah, they do. Uh, so they're not really tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're chill. Yeah, they're chill. They just like oh, they just tell you oh what happened, and then uh-huh. yeah, so the, I'm the one explaining everything. Mm-hmm. And then I'm I'm next to him all the time to the dentist, the mm-hmm. doctor uh, doing a surgery. So we always do surgery like oral surgery. Yeah, so mm-hmm. you always seem blood. So. I think like I'm thinking to to do more. So yes, so I can be a doctor for my age right now. I'm already 31, so that's still mm-hmm. a long time. So I want to do like something halfway. So mm-hmm. that's why I, I decided to be a hygienist. Mm-hmm. So the hygienist here, the work I know. Hopefully, yes. let, yeah, I'm still on the process. So. Let's claim that already. Hygienist is the one do uh, clean t- your teeth here. So oh. we're the one. You're the hygienist to clean their teeth and you know do the diagnosis whatever like diseases in your mouth or your mm-hmm. gums so tell the doctor so you you're in a dental office so like there's a dental assistant hygienist and the doctors so that's three are the you know the 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 one 
working in a dental offices so so hygiene is like it, it's basically like you're a nurse in a hospital mm-hmm. like but it it's it's way better than nursing because you have your own office hours mm-hmm. and it mm-hmm. pays it pays really good yes I, yeah. I think that's the best part yeah the pay part yeah okay. yeah plus I want to work like it's only office hours and I mm-hmm. will, I will I don't want to overwork myself in it. Mm-hmm. I'm so tired of, you know, how I work. I, I never stop working. So I just want to chill and make yes. more, but less work, yes. less hours. Mm-hmm. And go out often with with your sister and with your dog, Whiskey. I know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> my sister. Yeah, just once. I'm so happy because she's here. Mm-hmm. My husband, Josh, helped her to come here. Mm-hmm. So she, she got her... Her international students. She's taking her masters in business administration right here, and she's mm-hmm. she's currently here a year now, and wow. she had she got her working permit now. Nice. I'm so happy. Yeah. So yeah, the God is good. We're always like blessed because mm-hmm. you know, as long as you always help each other and you know do the right thing, you know, always uh, blessings. That's so true. And I know that you've been through a lot, and then yeah, you are blessed. You are being yeah. blessed because you did all the hard work. You're a good person, and you're helping others. I think that's exactly. the most important thing. If you sh- yeah, it sh- we should show your family, like your sisters, like how you work too. They're gonna follow you. Like, yeah, they're gonna just like they're gonna dream the same like you. Like, mm-hmm. you just, you just don't don't give them and give them. You have to you have to make the, them like a, a person that they wanna be. Don't just. That's what they said. Don't just give them a fish. That's Teach so them true. how to fit. Yeah, right? Yeah, I agree. In the future, you have a good future. And, you know, it's it's better that way. You can't just, like, feed them all the time. Mm-hmm. So, okay. so, you have been working in the U.S. or living in the U.S. for quite some time. So, how many states have you been to and what's your favorite so far? Um, I really don't travel that much here because we're you know we like to travel outside we've been, i've been to mexico <laughs> so guess, so but you know um california is so big and true. you know you came here so you can't even finish the whole california even though you're two years whatever your whole life here so we've been in las vegas yeah i think that's outside states yes. that's that i've been through yeah so just las vegas and mexico you know, yeah mexico Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then the COVID came, so you can't really travel at that time. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, what's your favorite place so far in California? Oh, of course, our place. It's not. It's the best weather in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's. You know, the weather here is really nice. It's like it's not that hot, and in winter. You know what's great in in here because during the winter we can just travel a, an hour away in the snow, an hour away in the beach, and just mm-hmm. and 15 minutes in the mountains. Like mm-hmm. it's everything is here, yeah. So I love Big Bear. Mm-hmm. Have you been there? No, I I haven't, but I think I saw some of your pictures. You've been there yeah. like many times already. Yeah, in Big just Bear. an hour away, so. Next time when you come here, we're gonna go road trip. Yes, definitely. And <laughs> you're getting better at driving, so for sure, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be easy peasy. You don't, you don't need to to do to a, hold on like that. I know a conductor. <laughs> yes, yes. Pero sige, sige, that's correct. So, so what makes you proud being a Filipino, like in the US? I know. There are a lot of challenges. You're living in a different country. You're learning the language, the culture, and all that yeah. stuff. But what makes you proud being a Filipino? What makes me proud being a Filipino? Everywhere I go, like everywhere, every people that I work to, they love me. Like they're always saying, like it's different, like vibes, like how hard working Filipino is. And they mm-hmm. never like, oh, and like they never work with the Filipino before. Oh, yeah, and you're the best worker ever. Like in my office, they're always saying like. I'm the golden assistant. I'm the golden wow. RD. Yeah, wow. the golden RD. Like, yeah, it's just how you respect pe- people. Even though, like, they when I, I'm just here for four years and they just 
like asked me, oh, you be was born here? No. I said, how come your English is so good? Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so that's the best thing. And, you know, you can, for me, I can just like go along with different people. Like, you know, those, you can imagine how I work with those millionaires in Newport Coast, you know, how mm-hmm. it is there. And, mm-hmm. you know, like, it's, I'm so proud, like, being a part of their life, like, being in their surroundings. Yeah, so my husband always telling me, like, you have to go where it's, like, you have to go for the gold. You just don't settle, like, don't, I don't usually work north, like, mm-hmm. LA, in that area there. I don't, I avoid that places, because, uh-huh. you know, and I, I want to go, like, in people, like, can, can motivate me. Sure. Yeah, you have to do that. You have to go to those people like can motivate you. Like, you know, you can you can say like, oh, I want to be like them someday. Like, that's that's mm-hmm. my goal. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I want I want to to surround myself with like those people with the high profile people. So it it makes you feel like determined to, to reach your goal because they're doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. And- so again, so um, living abroad is not just only you know easy peasy and all that. It's not always chill. So what's um, like the what's like the hardest struggle that you have to go through, and how did you overcome it? You know, the hardest struggle here is you have to do with everything for yourself. Mm-hmm. Like whatever you do, you're busy. You can you know in Philippines you have you can oh you if you have money you can hire a maid for like five thousand three thousand pesos here. Oh, you yeah, like um, I'm. I'm. Fi- if my husband is tired or he's busy working, I'm the one fixing water, buying <laughs> those gallons of water. Like here, you have to do your everything for your own. Yeah, you have to drive. Even you're tired, you have to do grocery. You mm-hmm. have to cook. You have to like deal with different kinds of people. I think that the the hardest thing for me is just you know being alone before, but now mm-hmm. my sister is here, she's helping me a lot. And at first, like the struggle is with those, I think uh, with those who are uh, looking for jobs. Because if you don't, I that's why I went to school. Because if you don't find, went to school here, you don't finish anything, you're going to stay in the same path mm-hmm. that, you know, it, it won't never change. You have to stay like like that forever. So you have to, to find a ways that you can have later on, you can work with your pensions. And yeah, so it's it's hard when you, you don't go to school here. And you know, sometimes in Philippines, like you finish school, but when you come here, mm-hmm. it's different. True. You can't you can't bring your diploma here and just do the here. It's it's way different from us. So yeah, that's why I'm just lucky because of the support of my husband and you know and, and helping my family back there. So yes. Okay, so what are you most excited about in your life right now? Or what are you looking forward to doing in the future? Uh, looking forward to doing in the future, no. We, uh, my dream is to be a, to finish my hygiene school and come back there in Philippines and oh. teach the kids how the oral hygiene works. Uh, I want to clean their teeth like in nice. my primary school. I want to mm. do that. Yes. So I'm get, I'm, I'm, that's my dream. For now and like finish it and come over there and do like um outreach programs outreach maybe outreach program yes. yeah i want to do that yeah teach, you know how how then how we in philippines most people are scared with the dentist mm. we, we barely go to the dentist True. unless you're dying or like <laughs> dying from pain so, yes. yeah yeah and yeah, it's it's way different here. Like just a single thing. Like over in Philippines, sometimes like if you have toothache and something bad in your tooth, they just pull it right away. In mm-hmm. Here it's different. You have so many things that they can, you know, yeah. do in your. Yeah, so many. Like you can do canals. You can do mm-hmm. rounds. So mm-hmm. I wanna yeah. I wanna come back and do the outreach program yes. there. I'm definitely here to help you out with that, for sure. Of course, yeah. <laughs> and I know that, you know, um, medical stuff, um, hospitalization is very expensive in the U.S. Yeah. Somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So your life is busy as always. Um, so what do you do when you're not working? So how do you enjoy life? 
how do you maintain the work life balance oh so like usually i work uh, in the dental office i work three to four days a week and then my clients you know before like housekeeping clients i work once a day there and some of my friends like they call me oh Gian, can you cook for me and then i come over there i cook for them okay. so yesterday i made like just one day at 300 dollars just for oh, cooking oh wow yeah i know and yet today i made like 150 for cleaning so basically my part-time job i can make 500 500 dollars in just mm -hmm. a part time so yeah i love to do that like i it's nice to work full time and then there's some other side jobs Mm -hmm. But when I'm not working, I just basically stay home, playing mm -hmm. with my dog, dropping my sister to school or work, and, you know, cooking for Josh and yes. yeah, for the family. I know he loves your sisig. That's, that's his favorite, I, know. I think. One yeah. of his favorites, for sure. I, will, I don't cook that all the time because he keeps eating it. Oh, yes. <laughs> he ate it for the whole day and whole week for sure. Mm -hmm, for sure, every day, every single mm. day. You're gonna have a high blood. High mm, wait, yes, which is not good. So yeah. So what's what's the best advice that your parents shared with you or told you when you were a kid or a student? Um, the best advice my my dad, especially my dad, is telling me all the time is like always um respect people and like just just do what just do good to others just like if whatever you go if you're you you respect others and and you're doing the right thing people will love you that's why i learned here like here i you know what here it's it's i don't know some other filipinos it's hard for them to find a job here but mm -hmm. i'm so blessed like i just even my people that I know like, I, I've been like different races I'm helping my friend to find the work so like I, here in America you can't just like just go school you have to have a connection you have to you have to like know people like so they can help you too you just don't like it's hard to find a job without the connections here that's the most important here so you have to respect them you have you have to you know discipline and hard working um last question is that so what message would you want to give to someone who maybe wants to also work abroad or maybe in the u.s um for those people who wants to you know pursue abroad to work abroad anywhere else just you know determine and you know uh homesick is always there you just you can't just avoid that Mm -hmm. But you have to, you have to, to determine and always say like, oh, you have your future goals in life. You have the, the outlook. I, I, I mean, I never thought in my life that I would come here. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I struggled in Saudi Arabia, those cleanings and you know, being a nanny there, sleep like 3 a.m. in the morning, wake up at 8 a.m. in the morning. You know, people like just just don't tell me like, oh, you're lucky you're in America. No, um, I came here even though my husband bring me here, but I work so hard. Sure. You can't just like sit here and do nothing because uh, everything is hard. So you have to you have to focus on your goal, whatever it is, and you just always remember that like if you work hard, God is always there. It's always helping you. Yes, that's so true. You have to work hard and of course, you know, respect people. Like what they always say, your attitude will determine your altitude. Exactly, yeah. Like even though you graduated with Latin honors, but your attitude is not that good, you know, your your yeah. peers or co-workers would, you know, treat you differently. Yeah, you know, um, most, of, most of the people here in America, they're always saying that um, they, how they like me because I'm always down to earth. So yeah, that's that's how everybody is saying. Cause you know, um, I rarely talk to somebody now in here in Philippines. Cause it's, I'm so busy right now. But like people here, like I don't know. It's always like I'm so happy. Cause they all every day they're telling me, oh, Dian, you're the, you're you're good and everything. Like just said, you're you're down to earth and you don't you don't like over. You know, overpowering people. Mm -hmm. That's the only, that's the most important thing here. Just respect. Respect is the 
you know people will like you here if you, you know how to to do, to respect each other that's true so another one last one what's your motto or guiding principle in life <laughs> my motto uh, <laughs> i forgot just like when you get time is gold but <laughs> just you know hard work and uh, determination is the way to success yeah even though like you know you, you you're having a lot of money you you sleep like in a bed of gold before mm. but if you don't do hard work and if you're not determined to do everything you you won't reach anything that's so true i like that hard work and determination will lead you to success that's yeah. so perfect okay last one um any greeting or what would you want to say oh. to your fans family Hi, and friends sir. You know, Sir Raymond, you've been here with me, so I miss you when you come back here. Oh, yes. Yeah, and uh, my family in Pinot Pan. Yeah, guys, um, you know, I'm always talking to my mom, but, you know, my Pasi National High School, we've been mm. there, so can't wait to be back home, hopefully, this next year. You know, Josh is always telling me, oh, we're gonna, gonna call Raymond and... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're and gonna eat the oyster. That's so true. And when you come back here, of course, we'll do the outreach program. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully, I will finish that program soon. But if not, we can still like plan ahead of time, and then we can mm-hmm. do that. I wanna do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, way of giving I'm back. I'm excited. Yes. I'm excited to do it. Me too. And we'll be able to help the a lot of, you know, students yes. and people in the community yeah. so mm-hmm. i guess that's all for me um any last words that you would want to say parting words that you would want to say before we end oh thank you sir raymond uh, for choosing me uh, it's my privilege and honor that you chose me you know my my one dream in when i was like in like working said oh how i wish someday i can be a guest speaker at school yeah. <laughs> And you did that already, so yeah, that's my one dream to like to be a guest speaker to tell kids like how mm-hmm. how life is hard, tough. So yeah, but thank you so much. Yes, um, yeah, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share your life experiences and also for being a good friend and for hosting me when I was there in the of US. Of course, anytime. Like you know, on my own, I cannot go to the places that we've been to. <laughs> So I'm just thankful for that I opportunity know, yeah. and also to Josh, of course. of course. Yeah, so um, that's all for today. That's all for today. Life is always full of challenges and all that, but we definitely can get the hang of it. And you know, the it's still early. We can still uh, achieve a lot of things in life, yeah. and and we'll just continue. Yeah. We just need to continue on moving forward. You know, uh, here age doesn't matter. You can be a you can be whatever you want. You, you know, in Philippines, like say, oh, I'm I'm too old for that. Mm. There's no no stopping in that. Always pursue. Yes. So, madam, good nga salama. Enjoy Thank the rest you. of your day and see you soon. See you soon. <laughs> Thank you.